Okay, on this problem, what we're doing is we're looking at the graph of 1 over x minus 1, which I have graphed. Uh, notice you have two branches, vertical asymptote x equals 1. But we're only interested in the graph above the x-axis and to the right of x equals 2. So x equals 2 is going to be about here, not drawn to scale. And we only care about the graph to the right of it. So notice this goes infinitely to the right. And what we're trying to figure out is see if I can find a volume for that region if we revolve it about the x-axis. So this is going back to volume, solids of revolution. So step one, we need to be perpendicular to the axis revolution if you're revolving. So we need to use a dx rectangle here. Notice when you revolve it, you're going to create this disk. And there's no gap between the region and your axis of revolution. So we're thinking just pi r squared. Your r just happens to be the height of that rectangle. And our bounds are going to just go from 2 all the way to infinity. So let's go ahead and replace that r. So your r is just really oops, 1 over x minus 1 squared, pi r squared dx. So if your bound is infinity, remember we need to replace it with the limit statement. So I'm going to replace it with t. So I've got pi 2 to t. And the function squared, 1 squared on the top is really 1, right? So this can be rewritten like this. And then we learn that, oh, if I see something on the bottom not raised to a power of 1, what do we typically do? We bring it to the top. So you should be thinking this is what you're trying to take the antiderivative of. So this is just your power rule. So all we're going to do is go ahead and add 1 to the power, divide by the power. And then I have my bounds. Now, before I plug in my bounds, I'm going to rewrite this, clean this up a little bit. It's really, there's a negative sign. This 1 over x minus 1 goes to the bottom. And let's go ahead and plug in our bounds. So I have negative pi here. 1 over t minus 1 minus 1 over 2 minus 1 is 1. And let's go ahead and take the limit now. Okay, this piece here, the negative pi is just a number. When I plug in infinity on the bottom, infinity minus 1 is still infinity. So 1 divided by infinity means this fraction right here is approaching 0. The bottom of the fraction gets bigger and bigger, so the whole fraction gets smaller and smaller. And then, so this volume is actually going to give me pi, 